Green has the church picnic on August the 16th, and we've been advertising a church picnic August the 16th, and that has been changed. It is now August the 23rd. It's correct in your bulletin this morning, so remember that. Uh, it's down at Bear Pen Swimming Pool at 2 p.m. on the 23rd. I think uh, Jordan has an announcement to make. I'll ask him to come on up. Good morning. morning. Blessed to have another day, Emily. I got an awesome announcement to make, and I'm very, very excited about this. We're going to start a new ministry. It's called the Church Van Ministry, right? We need volunteers. We're going to try it on a Saturday morning, 930. We're going to hop in the church van. We're going to go out in the community. We're going to go knock on doors. Hey, do you have a church you're going to? If they do, hey, do you need prayed for? If you don't have a church, we'd love to have you here at Clintwood, Clintwood Baptist Church. I think it's an awesome idea, man. We get out here in this community and, and spread, the, spread the word and spread the love of this church. So, I mean, we could go to a thousand, thousand homes and get denied, but that, that one, you know, I mean, just think about that. I mean, inspiration, man, I tell you, phew, about to cry now, but need volunteers. So if you want to volunteer and maybe changing a life, get a hold of me, Joe. Uh, you better wear your snake chaps if you go. It's uh, it's. Joe got bit by dogs yesterday, so <laughs> it's hilarious. I, if you want to know the story, I'll tell you later. But <laughs> he's tough, man. I tell you what, I looked over there and he was doing this thing. So, but we need volunteers. If you want to help and change life, spread the word of God and spread the love of this church. Let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. I understand Joe got bit not once but twice. Is that right? Yesterday. <laughs> let's uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we open up our our time of worship this morning. Father, we thank you so much, Father, for the the love that you have poured out on us, Father. We thank you that uh, that we are able to show that love to others, Father, and things we do and things we say, Father. Just help each one of us to be mindful of that as we go through our lives, not only here while we're at church, but every day of our life, Lord, when we're at work, when we're at play, when we're at school, help us just to show your love wherever we go. Father, we ask your blessing on this service. We ask you to be with Pastor as he brings this message this morning, Father. We ask a special touch. Father, we ask you to open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, Father, that we may hear what you have for us today. Father, in these songs of praise and these hymns that we sing, we ask you, Father, just to help us to, to truly mean what we're saying and what we're singing, not just to, to say the words out of habit, Lord, but to truly mean what they say. Just go with us now, Father. We ask you especially to bless this new ministry, to bless Jordan and, and Joe as they uh, 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 start this new ministry, Father, that they may take your word out, Father, into the community, Father. We just ask you to bless them in their efforts. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our next hymn is number 541. Why do I sing about Jesus? Let's stand together and do all verses. Deep in my heart there's a gladness. Jesus has saved me from sin. Praise to his name, what a Savior, cleansing without and within. Why do I sing about Jesus? Why is he precious to me? He is my Lord and my Savior, dying he set me free. Only a glimpse of his goodness that was sufficient for me. Only one look at the Savior, then was my spirit set free. 
Why do I sing about Jesus? Why is he precious to me? He is my Lord and my Savior. Dying, he set me free. He is the fairest of fair ones. He is a lily, the rose. Rivers of mercy surround him. Praise, love, and goodness he shows. Why do I sing about Jesus? Why is he precious to me? He is my Lord and my Savior, dying he set me free. Thank you. Would you please be seated? Good morning. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see all of you here today. And hope you had a wonderful week. Hope that you come this morning to express your love and appreciation and worship to the Lord. Have a lot on our prayer request today in our bulletin. Let's remember those. Uh, Marshall is going to have his surgery in six weeks up at Cleveland. We want to continue to remember him in prayer and uh, hold him up before the Lord. George will be going tomorrow for some tests and uh, I think he'll be getting some information tomorrow from tests that he's had done. Let's remember him in our prayers. Do we have any updates other than that on our prayer list? Junior Brandon, he's not doing very well. Um, he's refused any more treatment and he's just it's just a matter of time we don't know we don't know the time but God does we can keep him in our prayers okay anyone else Okay. Did, did you all hear that? There will be on August the 9th a prayer walk around the school at Ridgeview. And anyone that would like to participate, meet there. And what was the time on that again? At five o'clock. So keep that in mind. And uh, if you can, go and participate in that prayer walk. Do we have anything else? Oh, Debbie Hill, she's doing very well. She started more treatments. We found a couple little more tumors. And she's doing more treatments. And she's taking them very gracefully. Um, and she's doing pretty good. Pastor um, Calvary Aids has prostate cancer. He's going to have can uh, surgery on Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, <clears throat> Kingsport. I think Holston Valley. That I'm not sure, but right at this moment, he is going to be preaching at a Bible church. So we need to uplift him and his mm -hmm. family. Calvary Aids, and he's Baby Hill's brother. Uh, so, right. they both had cancer and their dad had cancer. You don't know the date on that yet? Okay. I don't think everyone knows. 
it's not going to be a good report. I'll name it like. Oh. <laughs> Lame <a> can. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. And let's let's do remember our uh, new work that Jordan has uh, stepped out and volunteered to uh, do. And uh, I know it's going to be great. Um, Joe, I got one thing to say to you. Uh, the first time you get bit, when you get bit twice by the same dog, the first time it's his fault. <laughs> Joe. Joe said one thing they learned Saturday was when you see a sign on a chain link fence, beware of dog, stay out. <laughs> All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and remember these that have been mentioned. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with humble hearts. We thank you for loving us and caring for us and meeting all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Fathers, we come today and thank of those that have been mentioned here. Some, Lord, are going through the lowest places of the valley. And Father, most uncertain times in their lives. And I can imagine how scary it must be and how they must feel as they walk through this time. And I just pray, Father, that you would give them a strong heart and a strong will and realize that you are the captain of their ship and that you're guiding and you're directing and you are the one in charge. And Father, we know that you can do that. So we pray that you will. And these, Father, that are looking for surgery and those who are recovering from surgery, and Father, some are going through the times of lo the loss of a loved one. I just pray especially, Father, that you would be close to them, put your arms around them, Draw them close to yourself. Let them feel your presence, your power, and your encouragement. I pray, Heavenly Father, that today as we come here to worship you, I don't know, again, what you might want to do in this service, but you know what you want to do. You knew uh, last week. You knew, Father, yesterday. And you certainly know today. And I just pray that you would help all of us just to stay out of your way and be obedient to the Holy Spirit and let you accomplish in this service what you would want to accomplish. And then when it's all said and done, Lord Jesus, we'll give you the praise in his name. We pray. Amen.
Father, we just thank you for this day. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house, Lord. We pray that you would go with us into this service. Father God, that you would touch Brother Bill, Lord, and help him bring the message. Father God, I ask a special blessing over this offering. Father God, that it would be used for the expansion and upbuilding of your kingdom. Lord, we pray over every household that's in this church today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And now as the choir comes down, if you will, turn to the person on your left, your right, give them a handshake, a hug, a smile, and tell them how glad you are to save them.
Within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low, fear not I am with thee, peace be still, in all life with heaven and flow. All my life was wrecked with sin and strife, this will fill my heart with pain. Jesus wept across the broken street. Slumbering court to Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Feasting on the riches of His grace, resting neath His sheltering wings. Always looking on his smiling face, that is why I shout and see. Though sometimes he leads through waters deep, try to fall across the way. Though sometimes the path seems rough and steep, see his footprints all the way. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown, I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. In every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Amen. That's an old one. First time we sang it in the praise formula, but uh, uh, did everybody like it? Yeah. We're going to start singing a few old ones as we go, okay? All right. Good to see everybody this morning. I wonder if anybody has a word from the Lord that they'd like to share with the congregation.
Anybody else? Don, Don and uh, Brenda's moved on me again. <laughs> good. But good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Alone, may 
God bless you all this week. All right, let's take our Bibles and turn to the book of 2 Timothy. And then turn over to 2 Peter chapter 1, and put your thumb there and hold that place for just a moment, and we will look at these two passages of Scripture. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 16 and 17, it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Now over in Second Peter, chapter 1 and verse 21, it says, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Our text today is our Second Timothy passage that I read, and our topic is... God's Word is inspired. God's Word is inspired. Now, when you go into Christian bookstores, and it don't have to be in Christian bookstores, but just about any bookstore, there will be a religious section <clears throat> that you can go to, and especially in uh, Christian bookstores, you, you have all kinds of books. Books of every nature has been written, and uh, some of those books are good and some's not so good. Some's worth reading and some's not worth reading. But in every religious section, you will find one book that can be recommended, and that is the Word of God. And the reason it stands above and beyond all other books is because it is inspired of God. And so as we look at this this morning, I want to just share with you some thoughts on the inspiration of the Bible, why it's important. The Bible we used to hear it called the good book. But the Bible is the greatest book, you know. And the Bible is God's book. God authored the Bible. God is the one who wrote the Bible. He used man, but it was God's book, God's writings. 
And the Bible is different from all other books and is the most unique known to man. It's, divi it's a divine library, if we could think of it in that term. And it contains 66 books. Th 66 books make up the entire library both Old Testament and New Testament. There's 39 books in the Old Testament. There's 27 books in the New Testament. And it was written by over 40 authors over a period of 1,500 years. Now, if we could just get that in our minds and think how hard that would be for something like this to take place, 66 books, 39 of the Old Testament, 27 of the New Testament, written by over 40 authors over a period of 1,500 years. Now, as we look at this, there are many translations and versions of the Bible Many things have been written about the Bible, but in all of those that you see and find on the shelf today, the one authoritative voice is found in the original language and in the historical backdrop of when the Bible was written, and God gives us all of that. So when you're reading the Bible and you want to know what it's talking about and what it's saying, find out how it was used in the original language, find out what the backdrop is, the historical backdrop, and how it was involved, and you can get, it helps you to understand what God's Word is talking about. So the Bible is the inspired Word of God. And I want to say again, 66 books divided in the Old Testament and the New Testament. 39 books and 27 books written by 40 different authors over a period of 1,500 years. Now you'll see why I repeat that just in a moment. A few years ago, a young Christian was packing for a trip. Some of you are getting ready to go on a trip. In fact, you're leaving after church going on a trip, some of you. And he said to a friend, I have nearly finished packing. All I have to put in the bag yet are a few guidebooks, a lamp, a mirror, a microscope, a telescope, a volume of five poetries, a few biographies, a pack of old letters, a book of songs, a hammer, and a set of books I've been studying. His friend said to him, you can't get all of that in your bag. He said, oh, yes, here it is. And he placed in the corner of the bag a copy of the inspired word of God and closed the lid. You see how valuable it is? You see, when we search the bookshelves for all kinds of readings that's so wonderful and we just heard about it and we've got to read it, you already have it, and some of it is collecting dust. It's called the inspired Word of God. Now I want us to look at this for just a few moments, and then we are going to close. Now I made so much about the clock not running that somebody just took it down. <laughs> so... If it's not up by next Sunday, I'm going to have someone with a bell.
to ring when we get time for time. Junior is going to take care of that for me. But let's look quickly. The Bible is the book of God. It claims for itself inspiration of God, and it was given by God to humans. It was given to humans for humans. Truly the Bible is the written record of the revelation of God to humanity. All scripture was given by inspiration of God. And God directed the writing of his word. He didn't leave it up to some uh, clear thinker or some uh, modern day thinker. He directed the writings of his word. He moved upon holy men as they sit down with pen in hand, God took a hold of that hand went by the Holy Spirit and he moved him to write the word of God. You like that? Amen. I tell you, we can trust what it says because man didn't have anything but a vehicle in this thing, but God was driving it. His hand was up on the hand of the writer. His mind was the mind that directed it. His will was the one who said what he wanted to say. And therefore, we don't have anything to do with this. Why do we want to change it? God has directed it. And so there's many reasons why that we ought to believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God. Now, when I was in school, uh, we were studying about canonization. That is how they put together the Word of God. How did they determine that uh, this part of it was inspired when they had tons of stuff out here as they worked through to find out what would go in here? And they would put in the Bible. How did they do that? Well, what we looked at was they used seven criteria that determined whether it was inspired or not. And I don't remember all the seven, but there's one stood out to me that I could never forget, and that is that the Word of God, before it could be canonized into Scripture and become a part of the Word of God, it had to have power to change lives. You like that? Amen. I tell you, it had to have power to change lives. I know what it did for my life. I know what I was like before that God's Word touched my life and changed me. I know what it did the day that I said yes to the Holy Spirit, that I'll surrender my life to you and I'll live for God all the days, the rest of the days of my life. And I remember that day when he moved in to this new apartment right in here and took up his abode. And I remember what it was like when the Word of God become real to me. It was the inspired Word of God. It quickened my heart. It quickened my life. It made something out of me that never before that I could have ever dreamed that I could have been. And God's Word was the one that did it. It changed my life. I heard a story about a young girl when I was in college in, in the chapel a time. I heard a story told about a young Jewish girl who found a copy of the book of John, the gospel of John. And she read this gospel of John secretly from her parents. And she began to hide away in her heart the word of God. And then one day she began to question her own self and her own life and she began to lay it alongside the Word of God. Well, what happened was that she received Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. As her faith built to that point by reading the Word of God, she was able to say to the Lord Jesus, I understand what you're saying. This is my life and this is what you promised me and this is what I'm going to accept. And that young lady was saved. When she told her parents, they were so angry with her that they denounced her and turned her and be in the, took away all of her inheritance and cast her out of the home. She was all alone, except she wasn't alone. She had the Lord Jesus Christ uh, uh, with her. 
And so it changed her life. I've heard story after story told about how God had changed a life. One of the greatest stories that I have ever uh, told was my own experience. That I was, I had a friend and his name was Hubert Faust. And we had been friends a long, long time. We went back a long time. And uh, Hubert was not a Christian. Didn't want anything to do with Christianity. He didn't want anything to do with church life. He just wanted to live his life the way he wanted to live it. And one day his wife uh, came to our church and she joined our church. And in the process, uh, in a couple of years went by and she called me and said, Pastor Hubert's in the hospital. Would you go visit him? And I said, I sure will. And I went over to the hospital and I visited. I went in the room and Hubert was laying there on the bed. And I could tell when I walked in the room that he was a sick man. And I stayed a few minutes and I said, Hubert, I'd like to tell you about salvation. I'd like to go, go through the scripture and explain uh, salvation to you. Not going to do it today, but I'm going to let you think about it. Have you been thinking about it? He said, yes, he had. I said, I'll be back tomorrow, and I'm going to sit down. Would it be okay if I sit down and share with you the plan of salvation? He said, yes, it would. The next day when I went back, as I walked in the door, Hewitt was laying there, and he broke down, weeping like you'd never seen a man weep before. And I went over to the bed and I took him by the hand and I said, Hubert, you remember what you promised me? And he said, yes, I do. I want you to go through the plan of salvation with me. I said, have you been given some thought to this? And he said, yeah, I've got a story to tell you. He, he lived down Carter's Valley and he said he was coming out to town one day and he saw what he believed to be a wallet laying beside the road and he screeched that bronco to a halt, jumped out of it and went over to find that it wasn't a wallet at all, it was a New Testament. And he picked it up and Marshall, it was a Gideon New Testament, uh, if that makes any difference. And he picked it up and he put it in his bronco and he said, I've been reading that Bible. <laughs> nobody had told him. Nobody had witnessed to him. Nobody had preached to him. He just found a Bible and began to read that Bible. And that Bible began to take charge of his life. We rejoiced together and we prayed together and Hubert received Christ that day while I was in the hospital room with him. He got to go home, but he didn't stay very long. God called him out. And people that knew Hubert came to that funeral and they was worried about Hubert's condition. He was left here lost. And you ought to have seen the rejoicing when they found out that Hubert had found a Bible beside the road. <laughs> and he just picked it up and he began to read it. And God got a hold of his heart. And that day in that hospital room, he said, yes, Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I tell you, the word of God that's inspired in this book has power to change lives. And that's why it's canonized into the scripture. It's there because it has power. There's a lot of things that I could mention here about it is the reason, but I'm out of time this morning. I tell you, you're going to have to change that clock or something. But I want to, I want to tell you these two other two things that I just wanted to talk about. This Bible, this inspired word, this book of God, this good book, this great book, this greatest book, this God's book is a book of life. The book by which people are to live and how that they are to die. And when they do that, everything's going to be all right. The Bible teaches us the plan of salvation and I could go through all of that. It's a wonderful thing. It lays out step by step by step by step how that you become a Christian. It is so simple that even the smallest and the youngest and even those without any education at all 
could come and know the Lord Jesus Christ. In that plan of salvation, he talks about the wages of sin. He talks about the gift of God. He talks about Christ loves us and died for us to save us. On and on. And then the Bible teaches us the way to live daily. He says in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 26, If any man shall come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. The Bible teaches us to live with a purpose. We're not just shooting in the dark. We're not, we're not just swinging at the wind. We're not fighting the wind. We have a purpose in our lives. And that purpose is to go into all the world, Jordan. Not just down here. In, it starts down here in a trailer court. It starts here in Clintwood. It starts on these streets that have the lost uh, living day in and day out but it goes into all the world and preaches the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever that I've commanded you. That's what it's all about. And then last of all, this book, this great book, this good book, this God's book is the book of the future. It tells us what's going to happen. Are you surprised at what's going on in the world today? We all are. We say, I can't believe what's taken place. Well, the Bible has already predicted it. And he says it's going to get worse and worse until Jesus comes. You know what we ought to be looking for today? Is not, is not for some president to go in office that's going to remedy all of these things. But we ought to be looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've lost our sight of Him. We don't, we don't think about Him coming anymore. We don't think that in, before we leave this building, we may go up that way instead of out that way. Do you believe that? Live like it, dear friend. Let's live like it every day and look for His coming. Well, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ... When we preach it, when we, when we preach the inspired Word of God, we have a message that meets the needs of every individual. Doesn't matter what the color of the skin is. Doesn't matter what their background is. Doesn't matter what their nationality is. It will meet their needs. One of the most amazing things, and some of you folks have, have experienced the same thing, I'm sure, when you went on mission trips, even though you couldn't speak the language and you didn't know what they were saying, they was at more record and that was worship service and that is the Spirit of God, you knew that you were in the right place. Are you today born again? Do you know what it means to say to you that the Word of God is inspired? And if we take it into our heart, and the more we take it in here, and the more we begin to live it, the more that we want to live it, and the more it changes our lives to look a little more and a little more and a little more like our lovely Lord. As we bow our heads this morning, and as we come to look at our hearts and our lives, just before Norman leads us in our invitational number. I wonder if there's a person here would say, Brother Bill, I've never trusted Jesus as my Savior. I've thought about it. I've been thinking about it. But I want you to remember me in prayer. Would you raise that hand? Is there a hand anywhere? In the balcony, down here, anywhere? God bless that hand, yes. Is there another? Is there another? Listen, friends. Is God speaking to your heart this morning? You've never received Christ. Would you raise that hand and say, pray for me. Pray for me. I wonder just before we continue, if you're here and you've never been saved, would you like to come this morning and just bow here at the altar and let us pray together? 
Someone will come with you and pray with you. Someone will tell you how to receive Christ. Would you do that right now? While we wait just a moment. Maybe you've been saved and maybe you've not lived like you ought to have lived and you really realize that you have sinned against God and you want this morning to get your life straightened out. Would you come and just bow here at this altar right now? Would you do that? While we wait, would you come? Norman's going to lead us in our invitational hymn. Listen, dear friend. Don't put it off. Whatever your need is right now, come and ask Jesus to fulfill it. You, this may be the last opportunity you'll have. You may never see this again. Would you come? As Norman comes and leads us in our hymn. Number 300. <laughs> Without Him I could do nothing. Without Him I surely fail. Without Him I would be drifting like a ship without a Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? Do not turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him how Without Him I could be dying. Without Him I'd be enslaved. Without Him life would be hopeless. But with Jesus, thank God I'm saved. Jesus, oh Jesus, do you know him today? Do not turn him away, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, without him. How lost I would be. He wants to do this morning before you leave. Okay, we will ask that the church be seated in order for just a quick business session, and Jeff is going to make an announcement. Okay. We call the business meeting to order, and uh, the reason for this is my mistake, okay? Uh, the business meeting got past me this past week. I thought it was this coming Wednesday. The deacons are in the middle of a deacon rotation, and I need to bring three deacons to you for approval from the church to be rotated, okay? Their names are Jason Hicks, David Perry, and Danny Rife. Do I have a second? Motion's been made. Any discussion? Okay, I ask for your approval by affirmation of yes. All in favor? Yes. Any opposed? Okay, measure passed. Thank you, this is my mistake and I'm very sorry for the inconvenience, okay? So, uh, ask for adjournment. Okay, second? Okay. All right. Uh, I guess let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this day. Thank you for our church. Ask a special blessing upon each member 
and each person that's represented in each home that is represented here today. Be with our, our, our sick folk, the ones that are hurting, our children as we go back to school. And God, we just uh, pray for your guidance in our lives and help us to draw to you. And thank you for the message today. We thank you for your word that gives us guidance. In Jesus' name, amen.